Semifinals are just around the corner, so volume and intensity for training are increasing, which means I'm having more aches and pains than normal, which is completely expected with the amount of stuff that I'm doing in the gym at the intensity that I'm doing it. So now recovery is key. I'm gonna share with you a couple of the things that I find super beneficial that I think you guys could apply into your recovery team as well to help you keep feeling good in the gym. The first one is gonna be directed at our lats. We do a lot of pulling in CrossFit. You hear us tell you, turn your lats on, keep the bar close. Lats, lats, lats. So if our lats are really tight, it's gonna pull our shoulders down and forward because they're internal rotators. We want our shoulders to sit back so we have a nice posture and can have a really good overhead position. So to do that, we need to keep our lats happy. I'm gonna show you two different variations of this that I use on a regular basis that I absolutely love to work on my overhead position. So you're gonna need a PVC pipe. And if you can, a small change plate, up to five pounds, I'd start with two and a half, and then a bench for this version. We will have a version without a bench. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread my plate onto my PVC pipe, and I'm gonna lie down on the bench and pull my knees into my chest. So in this position, it's actually okay if your back is slightly rounded. So I'm gonna lay down. I'm gonna have my palms facing me then I'm gonna think about pulling my knees into my chest, and then I'm gonna reach my knuckles up to the ceiling, and then I'm going to let this PVC pipe and this weight pull my arms down, keeping my knees tucked tight. Then I'm gonna come back to the center. Each rep, I wanna start by reaching my shoulders away, keeping those knuckles pressing away from my body, and lowering down. A very nice good stretch for our lats. If you don't have a bench or you don't feel like you're ready to have that weight over your head, there's another really great variation that you can do sitting against a wall. So all you need is a PVC pipe. I'm gonna come down to the wall, cross my knees, and the same thing. We're gonna start with our palms facing up about shoulder width. I wanna have three points of contact from my tailbone, middle, back, upper head. I'm gonna grip the PVC pipe and then I'm just gonna push out and try to come all the way up and touch the PVC pipe to the wall behind me. I'm gonna lower back down and do it again. Pushing out, coming all the way up. One key here, we really wanna focus on our rib cage. So as I'm doing this, what I don't want to happen is to start to feel my rib cage arch and come off of the wall. We wanna think ribs stay tucked, three points of contact at all times. This is great to incorporate on your recovery day or even as part of your warm up if you know you're gonna be using your lats a lot. I usually do two sets of 10 reps. Sometimes I do one set of 10 on the wall and then one set of 10 on the bench or two sets of each of them. Next thing I do for my lats is a front rack hold. So front rack, we're in front rack a lot in front squats and cleans and all sorts of things. So what we're gonna use is a plate. I usually use a 10 or a 15 pound plate. I'll either use a box or a bench. All I'm gonna do is come down into my knees. In this position, I'm gonna take the plate to the middle of my back, just behind my head, and then I'm gonna put my elbows on the bench. I like to hold the plate on the palm of my hand if I'm capable, instead of in my hand, to also work on my wrist flexibility. Coming down, elbows on the bench, putting the plate just behind my body, and I'm gonna hang out here for about 60 seconds. For the front rack stretch on a box or a bench, I usually try to hold 60 seconds at a minimum, and I'll do that up to three times within a session. So I'll pick front rack stretch mixed with this hip stretch that I'm about to show you, go back and forth on each of them holding for 60 seconds, and then you should feel a nice great stretch through the triceps all the way down the lats and even in the wrist to help us with our front rack. So I like to mix this hip stretch with the lat stretch. So I'm hitting my hips and my upper body at the same time and I go back and forth about three times. So for this one, all you need is a band and something to attach it to. Normally if I was in the gym, I would use the rig but since we don't have a rig in our garage, I'm actually gonna use our dumbbell rack because I know I can't pull it over with the amount of dumbbells that are on it. So I'm just gonna hook the band somewhere around my knee to shin height, and then I'm gonna take the band and I'm gonna hook it right at the top of my hip crease. So I'll show you guys exactly, and what we wanna focus on is letting the band pull our femur away from our hip socket to create some space, because sometimes over time the hips can become hiked, and that might be putting a little bit of pressure on your lower back. So I like to start in my figure four position and hold for about 30 seconds, pushing my knee away from my body. And then I let my hips roll to the side and it gets even deeper stretch in your hip capsule. Next, we're gonna move into our upper body and open up our biceps. Cause a lot of times we get super tight in our biceps just from all of the pulling that we do. 
and then also opening up our upper back and our thoracic spine because of all of the kipping. So the first one's gonna be the tabletop stretch. So this is also gonna build good strength in our wrists and also flexibility. So all we're gonna do is come down to the ground. We're gonna bring our hands behind us. Ideally, we want to have our fingers pointing away from our body, but if we can't quite get all the way there, we can work into that. From here, I wanna think about my shoulder pulling back. So I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together to open up my pecs. And then I'm gently just gonna lift my hips and continue squeezing my shoulder blades together. The goal is to be able to get the hips all the way in line with the knees and hold for about 60 seconds. If we can't get there or it's too intense, we can keep our hips a little bit lower or we can just go for shorter bouts and accumulate 60 seconds instead of doing it in one straight effort. This is something I've had to work very hard on. When I first started, I could not get my fingers all the way around. I also couldn't hold much longer than 15 to 20 seconds, but now I'm up to 60 second plus holds. So it's a really great stretch all through your bicep. It's gonna open our chest all the way up, but be patient with yourself. And if you can stay consistent with this one, it will really pay off. The last stretch is also going to be more of a dynamic stretch and it's also geared towards our chest. If we can get our chest to sit open, we're gonna be a lot more comfortable in our overhead squat and our snatch positions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by lying on our side. We wanna pull our knees up towards our chest. So again, they're above my hip crease. I'm gonna start with my palms facing each other and then trying to keep my fingertips touching the ground, I'm gonna be reaching away from my body till my bicep gets to about my ear. Then I'm gonna flip my palm to the ceiling, keeping the fingers touching the ground. I'm gonna bring the arm all the way around. Then I'm gonna reverse the process trying to keep my fingers touching the ground, reaching my hand away from my body. Once my bicep hits my ear, I'm gonna flip my palm, come back to the start. That was one, and I'm gonna do five per side. Last but not least, once I've gone through my stretching routine, which I just shared with you guys, those are also great to do before you work out or after. It doesn't just have to be on a recovery day. I'm gonna move into some muscle scraping, just especially on the areas that are super sore, to kind of break up some of the adhesions that have been created and like the sticky parts where the muscle's not sliding the way that it should. So I just put on a little bit of topical, and then from here, I'm just gonna scrape up and back, kind of at a 45 degree angle. So my tool isn't flat, but I'm just applying a little bit of pressure. The edge isn't super sharp. And I'm just gonna work up and back. And it's funny how you can feel almost like railroad tracks or little bumps in the muscle. And that's the area that we really wanna focus on to break up those adhesions. You'll notice it's starting to get a little bit red, but it feels pretty good. So I usually scrape for about two minutes per area. I don't go much longer than that. When it comes to muscle scraping, I scrape pretty much all parts of my body, but it kind of depends on what we've been hitting a lot of. So my biceps are feeling really tight, so that's usually a pretty regular thing that I scrape with all the pulling that we do in CrossFit, and I find if I can keep my biceps happy with scraping, my elbows don't get as mad. So typically, I scrape my biceps regularly. I also scrape my knees and my calves regularly if we've been doing a lot of running and double unders. So similar for the elbow, you just kind of put the topical wherever you want. I'm using beam the fixer you can use anything that you want um, but just kind of scraping around that area to create some fresh blood flow and just help out with bringing new nutrients to the area can really help speed up your recovery last but not least something i use very often is foam rolling just for some myofascial release and just to keep the soft tissue moving the way that it should it also feels really good unless you're super sore, then sometimes it can be a little bit painful. This particular foam roller, the Flare from Sidekick, actually heats up and vibrates, which I love. So it just feels like it gets a little bit deeper into my muscles. But my favorite areas to foam roll are gonna be my hamstrings because I think that we use our hamstrings just a lot. So I'll just start at the hip and I'll work down to the knee. I'll go 10 passes forward and backwards with my toe just in a neutral position. Then I'll go 10 passes with my toe pointed in to hit my inner hamstring. And then I'll go 10 passes with my toe pointed out. I do that regularly with each leg. And then I'll also hit my hips. So on top of the hip stretch, I'll just go back into that figure four, that same position. And then I'll work the glute knee because we use our glutes so much in CrossFit that we wanna make sure they're not getting too tight and pulling on our lower back. 
The Swerve and the Flare Foam Roller are two of my favorite recovery tools, so I'll drop those links below if you guys are interested in checking those out. I hope this video has been helpful and you can take some of these recovery tips or tools or protocols into your routine and add value to make your movement feel better and help you feel better in the gym. If you have been following our journey, we did just get home from a van trip that was absolutely amazing. It served as my deload right before we just really ramped up into this final stage before getting to the semifinal. Being on the van trip was super fun. We did sleep really well, but we were so happy to come home and not only see Milo because we really missed him, but also to get back into our bed. There's nothing like getting into your own bed. And when I got home, the first thing I did was crank the temperature way down. I think I went all the way down to a seven on my eight sleep, just to make sure I slept all the way through the night in a nice cool bed and was just super relaxed. The other piece was being able to see my recovery stats. Came home after a deload feeling really recovered. My heart rate was lower. My HRV was higher. That meant for me, I was ready to go right back into training. So I'm also super thankful to have those stats on my phone so I know that I am ready to go. If you're interested in learning more about 8sleep, definitely check out the link below and all of the information that it can provide you when it comes to training hard and also just in general. It's great to know how we're sleeping at night. We do have a full van trip video coming up on our van and all of the adventures we went on. So make sure to subscribe if you guys wanna stay tuned to see that video. Don't forget, smash the like button, comment below with anything that maybe you found helpful or anything else you wanna see. Check out the links below and have a great day.